There we go. Amen. 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 Well, let's get started. And I would like to say again, I think we're going to start the service with, they said, let us be glad when we go into the house of the Lord. Can we give God some morning praise? Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I just want to say I love each and every one of you. And again, thank you for those who came out for the New Year's uh, watch night service. It was phenomenal. It was truly a blessing. And everybody who showed up told me that they were really blessed to participate. It was it was nice. It was very, very nice. Very unexpected. Um, the Lord showed up, showed out, you know. Um, and it's, it's good to have people who are used to being in the world and drinking and partying and be able to go somewhere and actually have a sober celebration and enjoy themselves and realize they can have fun without drinking and smoking weed. Amen. Amen? Amen. So that was a huge blessing. Um, our scripture reading is going to come from Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. And we will start at verse 17. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Now, in respect of the reading of the word, if you're physically able, rest unto your feet. Ephesians chapter 4. So, uh, 813. 813 in the church Bibles, please. Ephesians chapter 4. I read New King James. The subtitle says, The New Man. Mm -hmm. Is that the right one? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 17. You may not have a subtitle above yours. Um, verse. Oh, right here. Yeah, the new man right here. Amen. Amen. The new man. Verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you shall no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness in the, of their heart, who being past filling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Mm -hmm. This is the reading of the word. You may be seated. I um, was getting ready to share a few moments ago. Um, how many of you guys have heard of the uh, TV evangelist prophet uh, Perry Stone? That was the um, trip we went on was... Uh, put together a tour uh, for Israel was hosted by his ministry and it's funny because I was in a shut shut in yesterday uh, no phone no running outside no TV and it was strictly listening to the word uh, being filled with praise and worship and studying his word. Amen. And Amen. saints, is sometimes you got to do that. You, you just got to disconnect from everything and go in and spend time with your father. And I thought I was going to just, you know, do a little time and it ended up being the entire day. Amen. Um, and while I was in consecration, he started giving me things um, that will be for his people, a prophetic word for his people. And while I was sitting there and I was making notes, that one of the things that I heard through Perry Stone, um, he was talking and I just caught the very tail end of it, but he had made mention of 
um, he said that one year he was given a word that there was going to be an abundance of births. And when he said that, my ears perked up and I'm like, what? And then he went on to say that there were 14 pregnancies in his church alone. And this was in 2016. And as soon as he said it, I said, oh, Lord, what year was that that you told me that a whole bunch of people was going to have babies and a whole bunch of people was going to get married? So I went to my notes and found, went straight to 2016, and lo and behold, that was, I believe, the first thing that the Holy Spirit had told me for that year. Abundance of births. The babies that were born in the 90s were born under the enemy. Y'all remember that? They were born with no conscience of wrong. They were servants of the devil. And if we really think of the timeline of how people behaved that were born in that time frame, not all of them, but a, a lot of them. Amen? And the other thing that was going to happen was that there were going to be marriages that were done in haste, meaning quickly. People who had not been together were going to quickly get married. And they swore they would never get married. And all of a sudden, all these people are like, we got to get married. You know, and, and uh, not to bust them out, but Myrna and Artie were one of them. They've been together for like 12, 13 years. He swore he would never get married. And all of a sudden, they come to me, Pastor, we need you to marry us. Okay, mm -hmm. right? You know, and so there was another word that was given that there were going to be pastors who would drop dead in the pulpits in the bay area alone i know of i think i lost count it was about 20 people that had literally dropped dead there was a few that made the newspaper um there was a bishop who was uh in oakland and was singing the song they, they sung the song uh pharrell williams i'm happy because i'm happy da -da 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 -da. And he jokingly trotted up to the pulpit and began to address the congregation and dropped dead and had a heart, heart attack. Um, and there were several others. So people started calling me that had heard me give this word. And they were like, prophetess, did you hear about this pastor? Did you hear about this bishop? Did you hear about that person? And like I said, I had counted 20 plus people that had literally died in ministry and it was scary but the Lord was trying to clean his house up the other thing he said was there was going to be an awakening of his children in the last two years God has been tapping on people's hearts that no one would have ever suspected them to be used by God does that make sense? Amen. Mm -hmm. and there was a releasing of gifts Amen. there was People who people had counted out, discredited, said they were of nothing, would never be nothing. And God released these gifts to use them in a mighty way. And the last thing he had given me for 2016 uh, was, so this is 2015 going into 2016, that those that were blessed, that looked blessed, were going to be cursed. And those that look cursed were going to be blessed. Because there was a shifting. Amen? There was going to be a shifting of the wealth of the wicked that had been laid up for the righteous. It was transferring hands. Amen? Amen. So if you were a child of his and you had been looking like things were not going your way and you've been struggling, there was going to be a shift that was going to take place. And it has been slowly taking place. Amen? Amen. There's, there's a lot of people that I've been hearing are getting jobs and, and, and positions and, 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 and homes and things are just moving for the betterment of God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? So today's title of this message is 
brand new you. Amen. 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 Brand new you. Amen. 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 See, you got to remind yourself that you are your best cheerleader. Amen. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will believe in you. Nobody else will believe in your dream. Nobody else will believe in your ministry. Nobody else will believe in nothing unless you believe in it. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of things when we started the ministry that I would tell my husband, like, man, you tripping. Ain't nobody going to do this. And I'm going to use the watch night service. He said, Lisa, you know ain't nobody going to come, right? People ain't go. People don't want to do. They want They want to go out on New Year's. I said, the devil is a liar. He's a liar. Because God said, this is going to be a whole lot of people. The house was full. Amen. It was full. Amen. And then I looked at like, mm -hmm, what you said down? You know. And you got to believe in what the Lord has showed you or told you. Even though it may not look like it's going to come to fruition, don't give up. Amen? Amen. Amen? So one of the things that the Holy Spirit gave me that I am released to share, I'm, I'm, like I said, I've been released to share a couple things. On December the 29th, he, he said, and it was funny because I thought he was going to give me like some real simple stuff like he did the first a uh, couple few times he had started giving me a prophetic word for the year. But this one was, you have to trust God like you've never trusted him before. Amen. No matter what it looks like or feels like, you have to trust him. Because you can block your own blessing. Okay? And the second thing he said, your choices have to be deliberate. My children's choices have to be deliberate. In other words, your yes needs to be a yes. Your no needs to be a no. And you cannot be double-minded and go back and forth because the second, the second you do it, you're going to lose. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm going to leave it right there for a second because when we go to the next portion of this, it's going to blow your wigs off. Um, verse 17 says... This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you shall no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Now, we have Paul telling the Ephesians exactly who they are. So I'm here today trying to tell you all exactly who you are. So Paul is giving them fast facts about how they need to carry onwards and forwards to their next season of their life. Amen? Amen. So my responsibility as a shepherd is and as a prophetess is to encourage and to edify and to correct you see we had a, a bible study and, and there was some questions about you know uh, 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 prophets kind of abusing their their power and they they like to beat up on people that's not what god gave that gift for Amen. he gave that gift to encourage and to edify, and yes, to correct. But it's not to expose your business. It's not to drag you through the middle of the street and, and, and let people throw rocks at you. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when the Lord gives you a word and you don't acknowledge that word, you have to deal with Him. That's right. Not, not the, 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 the church. That Hey, the blood is off my hands. I did my part. And a lot of times when you get a word from a prophet, the Bible is, is, is very clear that when he used the prophets of old, that their lives were dramatically changed. And if they did not follow the instruction, things didn't work out. And they would suffer. They would go through. They would be attacked. They would, they would lose wars. They would, they would be stuck in, or, or taken into bondage or something would hinder their lives or affect their lives dramatically. 
And the Lord is trying to remind us, just like back then, that the rules have not changed. If the prophet gives you a word and it doesn't come to fruition, is it really a true prophet? Or if it's a prophet that you know is a true prophet and, and, and you playing with that word and you being stagnated, well, guess what? You need to look at you in the mirror Amen. and ask yourself, am I doing what the prophet told me to do? What God told them to tell me to do? And a lot of times, if we really be honest with ourselves, we're not doing it. We want to do what we want to do. And then we want to look at the aftermath and be like, what and why am I going through this? Mm -hmm. Well, when the Lord gave you a word to clean your house or the Lord gave you a word to leave these people alone or the Lord told you to get away from that scenario or if the Lord told you to do this or he told you to do that, come out. And tell, Did you do it? Were you listening? Mm -hmm. And this is not to beat up on nobody because see, the Holy Spirit does not condemn he only convicts Amen. okay so if it's convicting your heart then this word is for you Amen. and he wants you to do better see because i was reminded last night that when we are convicted by the holy spirit you know what the bible says he chastens yes. the ones he loves yes, Hallelujah. just like a parent if you see your kid getting ready to stick their finger in the in the in the stove right Get your hand off of that before you get burnt. Right? You corrected them because you didn't want them to hurt themselves. Right? But if you didn't care, you're going to let them stick their hand in there and get a burn. Right? Now, you have to understand that God is our Father. Just because we can't visibly see Him, He is your Father. So I came by today to remind you that it is a brand new you in a brand new year. So this is a new season. It is the first Sunday of the new year of 2019. Now I need to tell you as of right now, today, there is exactly 360 days left until two, uh, 2020. 360 days. Wow. Think about this for a moment. Today is January 6, 2019. And until 2020, there is exactly 360 days left. The definition of 360 degrees is a way to think about how your life is going. Y'all with me? Yes. Now, I want you to understand today that if you do a 360 degree turn, 360 days from now, it will mean that you have started and ended in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. Help us, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Y'all caught that? Right. Mm -hmm. 360 degrees <clears throat> is a complete circle. Okay? You started in one spot, you went around, and you ended up right back where you started. That's not what Jesus wants you to do in this season. Right. Jesus wants you to change some things up. Yeah. Jesus wants some uh, 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 provisions shifted. He wants you to understand. He said, uh, 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 in all things, I want you to prosper. Yeah. But everybody think, ooh, money, money, money. Money. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about your health, yeah. your family, yeah. your ministry, yeah. on your job. Your marriage, your children, your minds, your physical, everything about you should prosper. Amen. Amen. You should not look the same, Amen. act the same, walk the same, talk the same, think the same. Amen. 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 There should be a shifting. That should be ready to be received. Amen. And a lot of people will take a new year and use that as a benchmark to go forward. But if you do a 360 degree, you're going to be right back where you started and what you was trying to get away from. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to think about how has your life been going? I want you to understand that if you know that there has not been change and you've been trying, keyword, you've been trying. That's 
the problem. You've been trying. Why don't you try Jesus? Why don't you ask him to show you how to do this? And yes, it ain't easy. It is not easy. Because there were things that I had to start denying myself from and that I didn't want to deny myself. You know, we like our creature comforts. We like our pleasures. We like the fun stuff. But at some point, we got to grow up and be like, if the Lord is promising me all this stuff over here and keeps telling me that it's mine because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he says all these blessings will be added unto me, but how come I can't get to them? Because I keep doing me. But if I sit back and wait on him to transform me and renew me and create in me a new creature in Christ, then all of a sudden I start realizing those things that he was promising me that I could have, I started getting them. Amen. Little by little. But the first things that I started getting was peace. Amen. Amen. Joy. Amen. A little bit of happiness. Sleep better at night. Right? Understanding that some of them pains I was holding on to, I, I, they was being freed and released. And I didn't have to hold on to that junk no more. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, I want to encourage somebody today. See, He doesn't want you to end up exactly where you started at this year. Amen. No change. But, what he is expecting and what he gave me to give to you is that he wants you to do a 180 degree turn. Mm -hmm. which, you, which means that you are standing in the complete opposite direction from where you originally started from. Y'all with me? Yes. You here? 180 degrees is way over here. Yes. Complete opposite. Everything that the enemy was trying to keep you from, you now over here looking back on, you was a lie. Amen. Said I wasn't going to make it, you was a lie. Amen. You said I wasn't going to have no money and no job, you was a lie. Amen. You said I wouldn't get my kids right, you was a lie. You said that my marriage was going to fall in the toilet, you was a lie. You said I was going to be diseased and bedridden and woe, uh, 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 Of Canaan, 
yes. Jabin, who was oppressing them. Yes. If we look at 2020, and if you add 2 plus 2, it equals 4. And see, 4 means the creation week. See, that 4 represents the creation where the sun, the moon, and the stars uh, was created. And what does that equate to? Season. Amen. See, without the sun, the moon, and the stars, there would be no seasons. Y'all with me? Amen. The Hebrew word for seasons is literally translated appointed times. Amen. Divine appointments. Yes. This is what we are approaching, men and women of God, 2019, okay? So we're going into all this divine appointment. So this year is the year that you got to get yourself in order, lined up, uh, 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 one foot in front of the order, uh, other paying attention to what God has been giving you and do what he's showing you to do and stop dilly-dallying around and letting the enemy lie to you. Because 2019 is preparation. And it means, 19 means God's perfect order in regards to his judgment in the Bible. Two plus one plus nine equals 12. 12 is considered a perfect number. It symbolizes God's power and God's authority. Amen. Jacob had 12 sons. Jesus had 12 disciples. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 patriarchs. Jesus began his ministry at the age of 12. And I can go on with a few more, but y'all catching the point, right? We are entering a year of perfected governmental foundation. Y'all weren't expecting this today, huh? Let me tell y'all something. Each person in this room is your own governor. Each one of you are in charge of your self. You govern your own mind, you govern your own body, you govern your own words, you govern your own actions and reactions, yes? Amen. Okay, so this is a new perfected governmental foundation. You cannot walk as the rest of the Gentiles. See, because their understanding is in darkness. And I'm speaking of the church. Amen? The church is in darkness. When you allow things to go on inside the walls of the house that is supposed to be a house of God, and they are not of God, you are in darkness. Amen. You are compromising the word of God. So you're dark. Amen. They are alienated from God. See, we are converted. Or we should be converted. Even though we live amongst those who are still in darkness. We are to walk in the Christ in the light of Christ. Amen? Amen. 19 says, who being past filling have given themselves over to lewdness to work in all uncleanness with greediness but you have not so learned Christ so in other words those who are dwelling in darkness love it let's keep it real saints they don't belong to Jesus they like what they do they like that seedy lifestyle they like the the crime and the grime. Mm. They love it. They love the, the type of women, the type of men, <clears throat> the type of scenery, right? And it's funny, because if you're in light and you go into them places,
places of darkness and you come out, you feel dirty. Mm -hmm. Something ain't right. Mm -hmm. And you immediately got to go into prayer. Lord, cover me. Now, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I, I didn't cut everybody off. I don't want to be. You don't got to live in a plastic bubble. <laughs> okay? What you got to do, though, is you got to be prayed up before you go in. And you got to be prayed up when you come out. Because <laughs> God needs you to be reminded that his light will never be hidden. Amen. Amen. You can take that little spark of light. You can have one little match and walk into the blackest of room. And it will light that room up. Come on. You all are light. And the people around you that are in darkness need a little flicker. Amen. 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 They are estranged from holiness. They've given themselves over to lewdness, uncleanness, greediness. They have not so learned about Christ. See, because as dirty as my lifestyle was, in the streets, doing what I did, and then I was encouraging, you know, even though without me vocalizing it or speaking it, I, 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 my, my actions was encouraging my children to follow in those footsteps. Amen. Amen. Right? And had nobody ever reminded me about Jesus, had nobody ever cracked open the word and, and, and allowed me to hear the good the good news right. the gospel yes, what does it say that Jesus died for my sins yes, and that I can be forgiven Jesus. and see nobody is running around telling people Thank you, you ain't got to keep living like that huh. everything you doing you can be delivered from yes, but we don't want to open our mouths. But you are an ambassador of Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why not share it? Yes, Lord. If you share it and they receive it, all glory to God. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. But if they don't receive it, let your peace return Amen. to you. Jesus. Shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. Yes, Lord. You did what you were supposed to do. But nobody is opening their mouths anymore. Nobody wants to talk about Jesus. They're ashamed and afraid. And the Bible says, don't judge. But my Bible tells me somewhere over in Matthew that you can judge a tree by its fruit. And to use discernment. So you know what kind of spirit you're dealing with. So the next time somebody tell you about, oh, Christians ain't supposed to judge. Well, Jesus changed the rules. And he told us to judge a tree by its fruit. And your fruit looks rotten. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Mm -mm -mm. See, these people, because they have not learned about Christ, they're blind. They have hardened hearts. And they don't even want to believe that they're sinners and that they're lost. I got a good, I got a good heart. I'm a good person. I do good stuff. I go out and help the homeless. I go out and do things for people. He, he knows my heart. God knows my heart. Somebody find me a scripture in the Bible that says that the heart is a good thing. There is none. Out of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And the issues of life flow from it. Out of the heart, nothing, everything is desperately wicked. Okay? So, they are slaves to the enemy. Even though they don't understand that. And Satan is so pleased with their uncleanness. With their unnatural habits. Let me tell you something. Have you ever been around somebody who was really really deep in sin Get and they houses be dirty, cluttered, filthy. Have you ever been around somebody who has had filth around them and it doesn't bother them? 
Because see, these demons get them to start disregarding yes, Lord. their environment. The nastier and the filthier we can take where we work at. We, every day we pass by Civic Center and it is so filthy down there. Because these demons have taken over. They don't want nothing clean. See, you got to remember that the devil is everything contrary to what Jesus is. Yes, Jesus is the light. They're dark. Jesus is peace. They're uh, confusion. Everything is opposite. Everything. The world is on mute. Mm -hmm. 
See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, no. Don't nobody want to say nothing. Christians, we done became some little peons. <laughs> we some scary cats. We don't want to say nothing. I don't want to step on nobody's toes. I don't want to offend nobody. But the Bible says if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. Amen. Amen. We, we can't be dummying down who we are. You see something you don't agree. I don't agree with that. You don't stone me to death because I say I don't like it. I have the Fifth, fifth Amendment right just like you do. I don't want I don't want to see that. Can you please? Oh, that offends you? When you coming in here with skulls all on your t-shirts every day to work offends me. No. <laughs> you understand right. what I'm saying? We cannot keep being quiet. We got to start standing up and, and, and acknowledging who we are. See, this is the problem. Too many peon Christians right. been sitting back and that's why the agenda has been pushed to the forefront. But let, let me let me clean up the story real quick. All of it was necessary. Amen. It is Amen. necessary for what Christ needed to happen in order for his uh, uh, prof, uh, uh, prophets of old yes. prophecies to come to pass to fruition, yes. so that Jesus can come back. Amen. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes. Amen. Amen. But in the meantime, and in between time, don't be a peon Christian. Mm -hmm. Believe what you believe. Speak what you've been taught. Stand on the word of God. And don't let nobody compromise who you are as a man of God or a woman of God. Amen. See, there's a lot of people running around acting like they care. But when it comes to their deep insides, they will cut your throat. And then they'll turn around and go to sleep because there is absolutely no light in them. These are the kind of people we're dealing with right now. You know, I heard a man of God this morning say, I remember a time when somebody gave you that word, it will be done. You can't trust nobody right now. It's like we did all of a sudden somebody to flip the switch and these people just that came out of this 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 uh, uh, shell that they were hiding back behind, and you start to see people true colors. They real identities, and they evil and ugly and mean and dark. It's scary, but you have to remind yourself not to entangle with unequally yoked people. See, the enemy wants you to be fooled. If they don't have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are in darkness. They are witches. They are warlocks. They are demons. They are doers of evil, and they love the dark. And you will know them by their fruit. And you need to beware of false prophets. See, they come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Matthew 7, 15 tells us that. They have not learned Christ. So if they're coming at, and, and prayers up, I trust God. I believe in God. What God do you believe in? Do you believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Or you believe in Buddha, Muhammad? Who, what God do you believe in? We got to be careful, saints. Amen. And see if you if you in this word, you won't be easily fooled. Amen. You will know them by their fruits. Uh -huh. Because I was talking to somebody one day and she said something about uh oh yeah, I trust I, I trust God and I'm oh yeah, I believe in God and some 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 and she wait, what you just say? She? Yeah, God's a she, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Not the God I serve. And immediately, this was about two years ago, the Lord started making me pay attention when I talked to people. What God are you serving? Because there is only one true living God. Mm -hmm. And when they give you the argument, let me tell you something. Well, I don't believe in everything the Bible says. Da, 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 da. Do not ever 
argue the Bible. Amen. Don't ever argue the word of God. You give it to them, let your peace come back. Somebody wants to challenge you, you challenge them with this. I give you a challenge. You go home for the next three nights and you ask God to reveal his Jesus to you. Amen. You go and ask him to show you who is the one true living God. And I guarantee you, he will send you a prophet. He will send you a dream. He will come to you himself. Amen. But some kind of way you will get a, a, a proof that Jesus is the one true living God. Amen. 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 We don't have to argue and prove to people who God is. All you got to do is encourage them. 21 says, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Mm, mm, mm. You see, beautiful men and women of God, we are learning of Jesus. We have learned of Jesus. And we have been saved from darkness. We have come out from defilement. And the time is for you not to just have heard about Jesus, but to learn of him, to learn of his ways. See, his truth, because he is the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. John 14, 6 tells us that. Saints, you've been chosen. Let me, let me make you understand something. You don't just show up to church because you wanted to. Right. You've been chosen Amen. by God himself. Amen. He wanted you to learn the truth. He wants to have your heart and your mind opened. And he wants you to desire more of him. This is the year to press in and to learn Christ, to learn his ways. You must admit to yourself, I need to lose the old man. Amen. Even if you think you up here already, yes, I need to lose Lisa. Yes, Lord. Every little bit that wasn't right, I need her to get out of here. Help us, Lord. Amen. Okay? Because we will never arise to perfection. As long as we got this janky flesh on us, we going to mess up. Amen. And if you do, oh well. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't no good and can't be used. You just politely tell the Lord, I am so sorry. Amen. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Yes. Humble yourself and pray. Amen. Don't do it three days later. But turn from it. We cannot live like we used to live. Nothing good is going to come from your old man or old woman. You will do a 360 degree turn if you do that. It's time to be renewed. It's time for your spirit, your mind, be new in the new year. A new creature, new life. New blessings, new favor, new miracles, new mercies. It's time. We've lived in the old long enough. Yes? yes? See, we will look new and bear resemblance of Jesus. We will talk different. That is God's divine plan for your life. Amen. We need to listen to what Paul's message is telling us today. Saints, you all need to ask yourself, are you truly ready to walk in your blessings? Yeah. Now, I'm almost done. And I want to go back and share a, a couple of things that he gave me. And, 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 and we're going to finish this message up. The Lord 
Lord showed me on the 30th, He kept giving me numbers. 777. For the last few days, I've been I've been seeing seven, 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 all over the place. Every I went to the store when we, New Year's Eve when we went to get the food. It was seventy-seven dollars and seventy-one cents. It was something else. We went to go to another store and it was seven dollars and seventeen cents. And it was you know and I and I kept the receipts. I was like, okay, this. this and I told her, I said, you see that? And then we went and we bought something else and it was. $16.66. And I went, okay. So we have to understand that three sevens is the threefold perfection of the Trinity. Amen. The Father, the God, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. 666 represents Satan, who is completely separated from God. Amen. Amen. One thing that he told me, I'm, I'm going to share three things, actually four things. World trade is about to be affected. Okay, so this, like I said, he didn't took me across the world with this. Then he told me they're going to start doing a different bartering system and I didn't understand what he meant and he spelled the name he said write this down A-Z-E-R-I-U-M Azarim Azarim is that a Hebrew word Lord look it up so I looked it up and it said something about like who who who's heard of Bitcoin okay so I see Azariam connected with Bitcoin, something in the manner. Doesn't make any sense to me. So I write it down on my note. And then the next thing the Lord says, the world is going in a backwards direction. And it's from things that we have worked so hard to go forwards. Y'all got that? Racism. We have worked so hard to end racism and we are now going backwards. So, the other thing that he said that there have been demons of ancient days that have been released on this earth for this season. So, we cannot play no more. So, the next day, I'm on prayer line and I shared something and somebody said something and something clicked and I went back to my notes and the Lord said that bartering system that I told you with that word as a rim that's a new money they're gonna start using this new money to start changing how the world uses money and then he had me understand Bitcoin. And I'm like, whoa. See, things are starting to spin in a way that we don't understand. And when he gave it to me, I, it didn't make no sense. He gave me the name of the, 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 the currency, the form of the name of the form of currency. I never heard, anybody ever heard that word before? As a rim, I ain't never heard that. Bitcoin, I just recently heard. Never heard of it, but he gave it to me crystal clear. Amen. Okay? We have to understand that there's going to be a lot of things that are about to take place. And, and I'm going I'm to stop right there because I'm going to share uh, with, with the rest of it later this month. But we have to understand that God is trying to get his church ready. Amen. The remnant. Okay. All he needed was a remnant. Yeah. All he needed was a few yes. believers. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I want to ask you. Will you trust that your God is giving you a new beginning? Can you not what you're doing? Will you 
trust him? <clears throat> Will you tell yourself that there is nothing blocking you or stopping you but you? Amen. See, all we got to do is think a little differently and act a little differently. That's it. I want to ask you, will you accept the gift of beginning all over again? Because it's really a gift. It's time for your new man or your new woman to begin again. And you must want to be made brand new. And God has just been waiting so he can give you brand new blessings. So I want somebody today to say brand new. Brand, brand new. new. Are you really ready? Are you ready for brand new thoughts? Are you ready for brand new health? Are you ready for brand new relationships? How about a brand new job? How about brand new finances? How about a brand new love? How about brand new life in general? Is this brand new for you? Because I know it's going to be for me. Amen. All right. And if this is a brand new year for you, I want you to rest to your feet and give God some praise. Amen.